Hi, this is Nick from PrimeLoops.com. In this video, I'm going to tell you about a new device in Ableton Live 8 called Corpus. Now, Corpus is actually an effect-only version of a new instrument called Collision. And both of these are natively built instruments for Ableton Live, but they have to be separately purchased through the Ableton Web Store, either through the suite upgrade or just buying the individual instruments themselves. So let me drag an instance of Corpus in here and we'll take a look at it. Now Corpus and Collision are physical modeling instruments, which means that they're not playing back samples, but rather they're actually synthesizing materials that you'd find in the real world, such as the head of a drum or a pipe or a tube. There's a great deal of complexity that goes into the algorithms behind such instruments, but that stuff's not going to be important to you and I. What we really want to know is how this instrument is going to help us make sound. So let's go through a basic tour of the Corpus interface and I can show you some of the things that you can do with it. Now again, as I said, this is a physical modeling instrument, so it's actually creating a computer model of the acoustic properties of these various materials. As you can see, there's a beam, a marimba, string, membrane, plate, pipe, and tube. I'll bring up the plate algorithm here. Now Corpus is just an effect, whereas Collision is actually an instrument. And since we're just working with an effect here, obviously we need to feed it with some kind of audio. And indeed, I have a loop loaded up from our dubstep drum loops pack, which is ready to go and be affected. Here's what it sounds like without Corpus. So it's a solid but simple loop with a few very powerful hits in it, and that's exactly the kind of thing that's ideal to feed Corpus with. In order to predict what this is going to sound like, it's best to think of a physical modeling effect like this as basically acting as a material that will then be hit by whatever audio you're playing into it. So now that I have the plate algorithm loaded up, you can think of this as a plate that's sitting there waiting to be struck by this drum loop. It seems kind of abstract, but it'll make sense in a moment. Now the first thing you want to do to get any sound out of Corpus is to adjust the dry-wet control so that you have a balance between the dry audio and the Corpus effect. And as you can hear, it sounds like the kick drum in the loop is actually hitting the plate. So now that we have that playing back, we can adjust the properties of the plate, which are found right here in this middle section of the Corpus interface. Here's a brief rundown of what these parameters do. Again, these might look a little bit complex, but they're actually very straightforward once you see how they fit together. Decay is just like the decay on any other instrument. It affects how long the sound plays out. Now what the material knob does is change the physical properties of whatever algorithm you have chosen here. What this means in practical terms is that it changes how low and high frequencies will decay over time so that you can better emulate certain materials. Ratio essentially determines the size of whatever your material is here. So as you experiment with this parameter, you can think of it as creating a very long and thin object versus a shorter, fatter object. And if you think about how that range of objects reacts in the real world, say when you kick a steel drum, for instance, and then think about changing the size of that drum, you can pretty well predict how this parameter is going to change the sound. Brightness is pretty straightforward. It just adds or subtracts higher end frequencies, thus making the sound brighter or duller. The inharmonic knob does essentially the same thing as brightness, except it's actually playing around with a different set of harmonics. We'll experiment with these in a second. The last really important parameter here is hit, which determines where the material is hit. At 0%, the material is hit directly in the middle. So if you picture a plate here, and we have hit at 0%, it's hitting the plate right in the middle. As I increase hit, the area of where the object is being hit moves out towards the edges. The last thing to point out is that these quality modes basically determine how many harmonics are being calculated. The lower you go in quality, the fewer harmonics are present, and thus the sound will get progressively more dull and simple, which is sometimes a good thing depending on what you're going for. So let's experiment with these parameters a bit, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So as you could hear when I adjusted decay, the sound played out for longer, as it would with the decay on any other instrument. Ratio also had its predicted effect of lengthening the material and making it far more resonant and deep.
as you can hear when I brought brightness up there, it actually reduced some of the bassier frequencies in favor of higher end frequencies, which is sounding pretty good on this drum loop. Over here we have a very straightforward filter section. As I enable it, you can see that I have a bandwidth and a cutoff, just like you would with any other filter. The bleed parameter actually allows you to bleed some of the original sound in with the resonator, thus blending them a little bit better. The width control actually adjusts the stereo mix between two different resonators. The corpus instrument actually represents not one but two different objects, both using this same algorithm type here, and width simply spreads them farther and farther towards the left and right sides of the stereo spectrum, respectively. As you bring width down, it brings the two resonators together in the middle of the stereo image. Next we have the tuning section. It simply retunes the entire object up or down. Now the spread control is not immediately obvious. It doesn't apply a stereo spread to the sound, but rather it creates a spread between the tuning of those two resonators. Another nice thing about this tuning section is that wherever you have it tuned, it actually gives you the equivalent of this tuning to a MIDI note and the number of cents, which is really helpful if you're trying to tune this very specifically to a certain frequency to achieve a certain effect. I'll scroll quickly through some of these other algorithms so you can hear what they do. Here's the beam. Marimba. String. Membrane, plate, and etc. Now you probably noticed that some of those algorithms had more of an effect than others, which isn't surprising considering that this effect is actually modeling real world materials, which all react in different ways depending on these parameters that you've set up here. So it's probably becoming apparent just how helpful this effect can be to add on to your drum loops, etc., in order to create things like transitions or breakdowns where you need to add a little something extra to keep the listener's attention. The last section on the face of the instrument over here is the LFO. This also works in a very straightforward manner if you've worked with any other LFO, and it simply applies automated pitch bending to the instrument. Rate is how fast it moves, amount is how much the LFO actually applies to the tuning, and phase determines where along the LFO's waveform the modulation will start. So you can get some pretty cool wobble effects out of this just by turning the rate on to sync mode, which actually syncs the LFO's rate to the project's tempo up here. We're working with 70 BPM at the moment. And of course the other mode is Hertz, where you can freely tune the LFO's rate independently of the project's tempo. Now there's one hidden aspect of Corpus that not a lot of people get into when they start using the instrument, and that's the side chaining section. If you just click on this triangle up here, you can see that you can actually set up a MIDI input. This allows you to actually tune the corpus instrument using MIDI input rather than just the static tuning control and LFO. So the first thing I'll do is activate a MIDI input. I already have a little MIDI clip set up over here on this MIDI track with a couple notes. And as soon as I activate this frequency button, you can see that tune has now changed to transpose because now the tuning of each of the hits into the corpus are going to be controlled by MIDI notes coming out of this clip right here. So I'll start both of these clips playing back and you can hear the effect. So as you can imagine, you can really sequence out some complex MIDI clips that will then help you play the corpus in a melodic way rather than just an atonal way. This last control, off decay, allows you to optionally control the decay of the notes using MIDI input rather than the static decay control right here. I'll see you next time for more music production tips and tricks. Stay creative.